So recently I reviewed the iPhone 13 Pro Max which surprised me by being actually pretty decent if also incredibly expensive and roughly the same size as a mobile phone from the 1980s. However, as someone with decidedly stumpy fingers and limited trouser pocket space, the iPhone Pro Max was most certainly not made for me. I much prefer a more compact device like this here, iPhone 13 mini, which sits at the opposite end of the size scale, much more tiddler than whopper. At just 5.4 inches, the iPhone 13 mini is comfortably one of the dinkiest blows of 2021, almost comedically so, yet Apple has still crammed in the same A15 chipset that powers those Pro models, plus many of the same features and tools. And the iPhone 13 mini also costs just 679 quid SIM free, making it considerably more affordable than those Pro models. And of course, most folk will still be celebrating their purchase by eating an awful lot of spam on toast for the next few months. Or alternatively, you can also grab the iPhone 13 mini from £42 a month from Vodafone, who very kindly sent in this review sample. Cheers, guys. But the question is, is the iPhone 13 mini actually worth that still pretty steep asking price? Well, here's my full in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do post subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, these days, small smartphones are very much an endangered species. Sony stopped doing its Xperia Compact, and the new Google Pixel 6 is almost six and a half bloody inches. So the iPhone 13 mini is by miles one of the more condensed handsets of 2021. I mean, this thing is just adorably teeny to the point where it does almost feel like a kid's a toy, but it will fit in basically any pocket, bag, or indeed bodily orifice. And at just 140 grams, you certainly won't even feel it when it's there. You've got an aluminium frame stretching around at the edges and an Apple ceramic shield protecting that display. Not even the most superficial of damage can be seen on any bit of that charmingly compact chassis, even two months on. And on top of that, the iPhone 13 mini is certified IP68 water and dust resistant, surviving depths down to six meters. So no worries if you drop it in your pint. On the Statham skill, this endearingly weenie wonder wins itself a full five tough nuts out of five. I mean, it's basically the jaw pesci of smartphones. It may be tiny, but don't even look at it the wrong way, otherwise you'd be wearing your lower bowels as a very moist necktie. Now shift our focus from the design to the software and I've already wibbled on a great length about iOS 15 and my iPhone 13 Pro Max review, but if you couldn't be bothered to watch it and to that I say fair play, well here's a brief recap. So a couple of months since the launch and several key updates later, Apple's latest iOS seems genuinely happy with life. Nothing major has really changed up for version 15. This is more a case of refining and tidying up some of the bits that weren't quite lovely enough. In this incarnation, iOS is better than ever, which is what you'd kind of hope for and expect at the very least. And I do still like Apple's selection of apps, even if us Brits don't quite get the full feature set and all of the tools that our US counterparts do. I still really enjoy the control center, which is much the same, albeit with a fresh focus tool that I really should make more use of because it's good at curbing distractions when needed without resorting to a full on do not disturb. As usual, we've got a great range of security and privacy features as well, including that green light warning when the camera is in use, similar to one of Android 12's key features. But of course, all of the usual iOS irritations are present and correct. For instance, I would prefer an Android style app store that can be accessed from any desktop. Not to mention properly implemented gesture controls, please, please, dear God. I know it's easy to handle with the one mate, but still it's kind of a ball they come to reach up to the top to go back in pretty much every app. And I gotta say, the notifications handling in iOS is still a wee bit cack, especially as there's sod all space in that status bar for any quick view icons. And as always, of course, the customization options here are very limited indeed, but at least you can rest assured that the iPhone 13 mini will be receiving plenty of security and OS updates for the next few years. Of course, there's still no sodden micro SD support here, but storage mercifully starts at 128 gigs now, so anyone who shoots a shag load of photos and video won't be frantically deleting stuff after just a month. And if you want to, you can stuff even more cash into Timmy Cook's G-string for a model with double the storage. Back on security and Face ID worked absolutely fine, even generally recognizing me in dim light and when I couldn't be asked to drag a razor across my face for a good few days. Although of course, every time I stepped outside with my face mask on, Face ID then doesn't work, so you end up having to enter your pin about several dozen times a day. Please, Apple, Timmy C, I am begging you, mate, put a sodden fingerprint sensor on your iPhones. Now the iPhone 13 mini sports a 5.4 inch OLED display and as far as the tech and the actual output goes, there's not really much difference versus last year's iPhone 12 mini. Once again, it's a full HD plus resolution, that's 2340 by 1080 pixels, which means supremely crisp visuals thanks to that teeny size. 
you've got HDR support for streaming services and while you've got limited control over the colour output, I was perfectly happy with what I saw. Photos are naturally reproduced, cinematic fare is simply stunning with sharp contrast and more vibrant subject matter like Pixar movies really burst from that dinky display. Those rich tones are proper deep fried sugary goodness for your peepers. But of course naturally I do have some caveats to all of this gushing. So one, the iPhone 13 mini's display is perhaps unsurprisingly quite mini, so not exactly the ideal way to take in a really cinematic Marvel blockbuster for instance. It's certainly doable and of course the picture is super super sharp which helps but, uh, but yeah still, still not great. Two, there's that frankly ludicrous moustache notch which does intrude on your content quite obnoxiously when you go full screen and it's bad enough on the effing enormous Pro Max model but here on the Mini it is just baffling. How did Apple ever think that this was okay? Why not just do what Sony and others do and have no notch at all? The iPhone 13 mini is a tad brighter uh, when you're outside in very very bright sunlight but not to the point where it actually makes any difference to comfort levels and visibility. And by that I mean the visibility was already very good on the iPhone 12 mini and it's still great here on the 13. However, I would have liked some kind of super dim mode for really comfortable nighttime viewing like what you get on the Pixels because it's not quite there on those lower brightnesses, although at least you do get the night shift uh, feature which has helped to filter blue light to make things a bit easier on your old retinas. And another grumble with the mini model of iPhone is the fact that it is stuck at 60Hz full time as well, whereas like the Pro models scale all the way down from 10Hz all the way up to 120Hz and even a lot of budget Android smartphones at least offer a 90Hz mode these days. So yeah, this dinky delight isn't quite as creamy smooth as its more expensive siblings or Android's about half the price. And technically the iPhone 13 mini has a stereo speaker arrangement but the earpiece speaker isn't as hot as the bottom blaster and when you boost the volume you will be treated to some decidedly tinny audio. You'll definitely want to stick with a Bluetooth speaker or some Bluetooth headphones when you are streaming some music, watching a bit of Netflix or whatever. And the good news is the Bluetooth wireless connectivity absolutely perfect on the iPhone 13 mini. Not a single stumble or judder the entire time I was streaming with this thing. Now Apple's A15 chipset once again powers proceedings on the iPhone 13 mini and it's an absolute belter. Everyday running is silky smooth or as smooth as that 60Hz display will allow and if you're a gamer you can blast through any title on that app store no worries. That said the iPhone 13 mini isn't exactly an ideal gaming device and the only issue with having a phone this small besides the fact that you're obscuring a large portion of the screen with your thumbs is that the handset does heat up rather quickly under duress. Not to a troublesome amount but I did notice after a good bit of Genshin it got slightly toasty around the back end uh, unlike the Pro Max model. And of course naturally you've got full 5G support here on the iPhone 13 mini. Again as you would expect at this sort of price point no big whoop because even Android phones under £200 these days are packing a good bit of 5G action. So solid performance all round and I've got to admit battery life as well. The iPhone 13 mini absolutely blew my expectations out of the water although my expectations were lower than the average 80 year old ball bag. With lots and lots of screen on time I really was not expecting this dinky blower to last me a full day but I didn't manage to kill it a single time not once before I finally staggered into bed. The only time I came close was when I had a good couple of hours on Genshin Impact and apart from that lots of screen on time using it as a sat nav for an hour or two plenty of camera play all that good stuff it was still generally around sort of 20 to 25 percent at the end of the day. My only complaint with the battery tech is that the iPhone 13 mini takes a little while to charge up certainly again compared with a lot of uh, cheaper Android smartphones but at least you do have wired and wireless charging. Now the camera setup here on the iPhone 13 mini is pretty straightforward. You've got a 12 megapixel primary sensor and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter although it is different hardware to the iPhone 13 Pro models and not just because of the lack of a zoom lens. And it is also a very similar setup to last year's iPhone 12 mini although the overall experience is slightly changed up here. Yes the megapixel count is quite low compared with many rivals but I found that my test snaps packed in plenty of details so they looked absolutely fine when I did throw them up on a big telly or a monitor. Killer accuracy is solid as well comparable to the likes of the Pixel 6 smartphones and even indoors and in fairly low light the iPhone can still produce quite natural images with competitive levels of detail. And low light photography is slightly improved over last year's mini with the same night mode to hand when needed. But there is no lidar scanner for super fast autofocus when you are shooting in low light conditions unlike the more premium iPhone models. You might have to just wait a while just make sure you've got your subject in focus before you take the shot. Plus if you're attempting to snap moving subjects in less than ideal lighting well get ready for some very fuzzy results and I'm not just talking about this lad's fairy wee mug. 
Apple's new photographic styles feature serves up five different camera settings on auto mode to choose between. I left it on standard for the majority of my testing as this offers the most natural image capture, but you can also swap to rich contrast, vibrant, warm and cool options for a different vibe. The end result isn't vastly different to what you'll get from you know, the simple filter effects on a lot of other smartphones, but generally the human subjects remain untouched while the background is what's actually changed up. It's quite a neat little effect. You also have that 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, which can again capture quite natural looking snaps with a pulled back viewpoint, although it struggles more in evenings. And unlike the Pro phones, there's no separate zoom shooter, so you are topped off here at five times digital zoom, and even that is a bit pants. Whole movies can be shot at up to 4K resolution and up to 60 frames per second for pleasingly natural footage. Apple phones really do excel in this area, again, as long as the lighting isn't working against you. And yes, you got that cinematic mode so you can shift focus in a jazzy manner from foreground to background. Get you, Mr. Fancy Pants iPhone. And the 12 megapixel selfie snapper is perfectly okay. Again, pretty decent results as long as the lighting's alright. In more dim conditions, you tend to lose a bit of the skin tone accuracy. And that right there is my full final frank review of the iPhone 13 mini a couple of months after it launched and overall I gotta say it's still my favourite iPhone. It's still ridiculously expensive, that notch is just plain silly and it suffers from all the usual premium pitfalls like a lack of micro SD expandability and headphone jack action but the performance is really solid, the battery life absolutely bowled me over and let's face it if you want a compact smartphone in 2021 it pretty much wins by default. So that's what this bold northerner reckons of the iPhone 13 mini, but have you been using it as your full-time smartphone? It'd be great to hear from you down in the comments below as well. Let me know if you're tempted, and if not, why not? And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody fantastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.